Hello, this is Jeremy Bullock who played Boba Fett in the first Star Wars trilogy and you're listening to Radio Free Decipher. Hello everyone and welcome to Radio Free Decipher. My name is Mark Tuttle and I will be your MC for DecipherCon 2000. You're probably here right now because you want some exclusive details on everything going on this October down in Kissimmee. Well, I can't give you full details, and we're still pulling together an entire weekend full of fun and games, and everything Star Wars, Star Trek, Young Jedi, and Austin Powers, maybe we'll throw some boy crazy in there for you too, here's a little bit of what you can expect. Now, of course, we're going to put an end to all the smack talk and find out who's number one once and for all. We'll have the world finals for the Decipher Star Wars CCG, the Star Trek CCG, Young Jedi, and Tribbles. So get your Tribble deck put together, folks. Plus, it'll be exciting to watch as the newest expansions for Star Wars and Star Trek turn the tournament environment on its ear. By the way, bonus points if you get Tribbles on the Death Star 2. Good luck. Now, in all, we're looking at 60 tournaments for the whole weekend of DecipherCon, so there's definitely something for everybody down there. Now, if you're not one of the lucky ones to land a spot in the finals, we have a weekend full of fun for you as well. There'll be lots of tournaments all over the exhibit hall with thousands of fans there, so you'll never be short for a game. Pretty much count on gaming 24 hours a day. Now, I can tell you that we've got some non-CCG-related events happening as well. Now, I can't tell you much about this, but get ready for the Decipher Olympics. It'll be a bunch of crazy events to test skills you don't even know you have. Plus, we'll make it just like the real Olympics, which, of course, are in Australia this year. We'll all make fun of Joe's talking like him all weekend. That'll be fun, mates. <laughs> we'll also continue an exclusive Decipher tradition with last person standing trivia. Now, you better brush up on every bit of trivia you can, because the questions will come from every corner of the Trek Star Wars Universe, and beyond. Now, here's a hint here, folks. You uh, might want to look at your cards carefully, maybe thumb through some of the episodes again, and maybe even dust off your old copy of Hardware Wars. Did I say that? No. no. Now, next up, if you ever wanted to make a dream card, we're planning some special clinics to show you exactly what happens behind the scenes at the Cypher when we produce cars. We've got some seminars, some clinics coming up. In one of them, the combined audience will help produce a card in an upcoming set. Now, we have did this before. I won't tell you what card it is. You'll have to guess that for yourself. But it's a lot of fun, folks. And I think maybe we should work on something that makes Warrant Officer McKay into a Dark Jedi. What do you think? Is it possible? All right. Also, uh, just in case you uh, think that we forgot, we're going to have some exciting guests for you to meet. And remember, that's a great opportunity to get your cards autographed from members of the Star Wars and Star Trek universe. Now, we're not going to give you the listing of the guests yet, but we got some exciting folks coming, folks, so get ready for that, because if nothing else, you're going to meet some people you probably never thought you would meet before. Now, speaking of meeting people, you'll meet everyone who's behind the scenes at the Cypher, all the, uh, the PD people, you'll meet the marketing people, uh, you'll even meet Gus. He's the guy who empties our trash cans. You know, the funny thing is, Gus has the best card collection of all of us. Hmm. So, that means information, folks. You'll get all information on upcoming products like the hot new Lord of the Rings CCG, which we just announced at Gen Con. Maybe you'll find out a little bit about the uh, Star Trek RPG. Again, another big announcement this year at uh, Gen Con. We'll tell you a little bit about Jedi Knights. That's the exciting new Star Wars game, which is kind of between Young Jedi and our Star Wars CCG which will feature some of the most incredible graphic art that's ever come out of the art department at Decipher, which we all know is the best-looking art you will find in the CCG, maybe even in the entire gaming market right now. So, lots of other cool projects to tell you about, folks. You'll get the information at DecipherCon first. So, no excuses, folks. Make your plans now to join us for DecipherCon 2000. Now, you can get more details, your travel details and all that, here on the Decipher website. You can also watch for more specific details in the upcoming weeks. As we get closer and closer to DecipherCon 2000, we're going to tell you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, until pretty much you know everything that's happening. Now, I'll be the MC for the event. At various times, I will stand up in front of the crowd. We'll tell you what's going on, where. We'll have programs for you. We want to make sure that you get to all the events you possibly can, because we've got the entire weekend covered for you folks. So we hope to see you down in Florida for DecipherCon 2000 this October. Now, let's turn Radio Free Decipher over to Kyle and Evan. They've got some very special celebrity guest interviews. 
We're here with Radio Free Decipher and Peter Mayhew today, the person behind the mask of Chewbacca. How are you doing today, Peter? I'm fine. Having a wonderful time here. All right. Well, we're in Chicago at Wizard World, and uh, Peter decided to take a few minutes with us and say hi to everybody out there in Radio Free Decipher land. So we got some questions for you. First, Peter, back in 1977, Star Wars came out, and you became a piece of American history. So tell us about how you became Chewbacca and, and uh, what's been going on since. Well, in, in back in 77, um, I'd done a previous movie in 75, which was Sinbad and the Outer Tiger. I played the Minotaur uh, with Ray Harryhausen and did Who is the Master of, special, uh, of Creature Animation. So that was a good start. And then I was talking to people that moved, some of the technicians that moved from the movie to movie, and they said, would you like to do some more? So I said, yes. Eight, uh, about a year later, got a phone call, would you like to play a character in a sci-fi movie? Oh, um, uh, what's the name of it? Oh, it's Star Wars. What? And that was my reaction. Went up and saw George, saw the character. George decided that I was the best thing he'd seen, sort of. And the character, we discussed it about a 20 minute interview and that was it next thing I know I'm getting the costume made and then we're all set it was as easy it was as easy as that so do you know we did the movie um, not knowing the script half the script not seeing the special effects because they were being done at the same time in California waited till it came out saw it great success then Empire came along, followed that, and then Jedi, and stuff like that. And the character of Chewie evolved. And it was, yeah, it was loved by a lot of people, because Chewie is a teddy bear, basically. Absolutely. And everybody, I don't care whether you're male, female, old or young, have had a teddy bear at some time. And you talk to the fans that come up and see me. I love your character because it's a teddy bear. Yeah, you know, I've still got my teddy bears from ages ago, and there is Chewie. You know, and it is a wonderful feeling to be able to have done something like that. Well, yeah, we were just walking through the convention hall just a minute ago, and actually everybody was taking pictures of yeah. you and saying Chewie, Chewie. You know, so uh, that's got to be a great feeling. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, and it. Yeah, sometimes it gets a little bit, you get fed up with it after a three day convention. You need security, you need, you know, you, you just want to go home and just give, you give yourself time to react to what is going on in the world. And the mere fact that you have so much effect on so many people, that is quite a responsibility at times. So, but most of the time, I enjoy it. It's no problem. Good, excellent. So, things have been going well for you here this weekend. Absolutely wonderful. Everybody, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to come in, talk to the fans. No problems. No. Yeah, everybody's been fun. Even the, even the so-called boisterous teenagers have been fun to to talk to. Good, good. Well, um. Now, recently, four years ago, you won the big award at, uh, from MTV. They finally awarded your valor, you know, because you missed out on the, on the medal at the end of the original Star Wars. So, but MTV hooked you guys up, and Terry Fisher uh, gave you the medal. So, t tell me about that. Well, we, uh, I got a, I got a, a fax. I've been away. Got, got home. There's a fax from MTV. Chewie is getting, Chewie's getting a lifetime achievement award from us. We would like you to come out if possible. So the arrangements were made, and they'd also got in touch with Lucas to do to have the costumes down there as well. So I thought, wonderful, yes, fine, we'll do that. And so we go out to California, and we go out. To, they turned an old aircraft hangar into a theater, and it was a great show. Everybody was there, and the costume was there and I hadn't worn the costume for 14 years and it, yet it still fitted me perfectly. It was just like riding a bike again, got right back in. It was just like walking under the set, it really was. Uh, so we, and I didn't know 
at that particular time that Kerry was going to do the honours with the medal. I'd seen the medal, but, and it was a great surprise that Kerry you know, had agreed to come down and do this. So it was a wonderful thing to see her again after a long time. And we get to the show starts. I, the Chewy medal, the Chewy thing was about halfway through it. So I get dressed and go into the old darkened auditorium at the back. And Mike Myers comes out, Lifetime Achievement Award comes up on the big screen and around. And suddenly there's a montage come up. The snow scenes, all the other scenes, all the favourite Chewy scenes in the mo on all three movies. And consequently, Mike Myers points a spotlight at me. I'm in the middle of the auditorium. As I walk forward, everybody stands up row by row by row as I'm going forward. There's two and a half thousand people in this audience, in the, in the audience. It got a five minute of standing ovation. It was the only standing ovation of the night. Carries up on stage with the medal, puts it around my neck. I pick her up. We do the or after we do the acceptance speech and you know the usual format. Uh, and then she gives me a hug. So I pick her up. I just straighten my knees and she's up there. <laughs> and it was a wonderful feeling to see guys like Michael, um, all all the so-called superstars that grew up on Star Wars. It was wonderful. A five minute, as I say, a five minute ovation. Never been, you know, it's the longest thing that I've ever done. And it was a wonderful feeling uh, to know that the costume still fits and it's still around. And I can still perform the way that Dewey, the, the way that Dewey does. So that was great. You know, we're going from a high point to a low point here. Uh, as most of people out there know, uh, in Vector Prime, one of the newer Star Wars novels, uh, Chewie came to an untimely end. Uh, how'd that make you feel? And, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Um, I got a phone call from Stephen Townsway at Lucas saying that the book was going to come out in two or three weeks' time. Um, that Chewie was being killed off. God knows why, and I still don't understand it. But when you, I suppose, when you work it out, you look at the characters that you've got left. You've got three people: Arthur, Leia, and Luke. You can't kill three people and Arthur because they are the main storytellers. You can't kill kill Han and Han and Leia off because that's the romance. So side of the stories. You can't kill Luke off because it's his story. If he killed him off, it would be the end. So, unfortunately, poor Chewie had to go. Um, but I was assured that it wouldn't affect any of the movies because the book is set, I believe, 25 or 30 years after Jedi. So it doesn't matter. You know, there's still a lifetime of movie making after Jedi, right? Absolutely. So, I, yeah, and having, having, I think it's nice that you've got a series of comic books dedicated to one, to one character. Three P.O.'s never had it, Artie's never had it, no other, no other characters had a storyline that has been dedicated to them. And the comics are wonderful. Yeah, I've, I've looked at them, I've read them, I've even read the book, which is a bit unusual. <laughs> um, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. And Did you get a lot of people that uh, wrote to you or emailed oh, yeah. you about, you know, the outpouring of support? Well, it was, I think it was the way it was done, because it was splashed across CNN News. Peter Mayhew said, Oh, that's hard. I was in England, and I just got back from Germany before coming back to the States. And I got phone calls from family, because it had been announced 
that someone had heard that Peter Mayhew had died. Oh no! So we were able to um, we were able to squash those rumours straight away, and a couple of couple of uh, promoters. My God, we've heard it. We've heard that you're dead. Are you coming to our convention? <laughs> yeah, of course I'll be there. I'll be there. No problem. Um, but you've got to take it as okay. You've got to t- you've got to take it as part of the of, of of being who you are. Yeah, I'm still able to do conventions because I'm the pit, I'm the actor, Peter Mayhew, who played Chewbacca. If Chewbacca's dead, fine, no problem. But it, you know, as I say, I never even when we started them started Star Wars and started the character, I didn't expect it to last this long. Yeah, it's been a it's been a really wild ride for you. It's been a great wild as you say, great wild ride. But I've enjoyed every minute of it. I w- and I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, I'd go back and do it again. Excellent. Well thank you very much, Peter, for spending some time with us and our listeners today. Uh we wish you the best of luck. Okay, no problem. Bye bye. Bye. Hello, we're back at Gen Con. This is Evan Lorenz. I'm now sitting down with designers Tom Bronlick and Raleigh Tesh, who've had a hand in many, many of the CCGs that you know and love at Decipher. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Raleigh. Hi, this is Tom here. I want to sit down and talk to you about, uh, let's see, you, you've helped out with most everything that we've produced, even even a hand in the triples game, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Um, by the way, it's very early in the morning, and... Uh, and uh, yeah, Warren uh, came to us with the idea for uh, a side game if we could design it in two days. Otherwise, we weren't going to do it. And um, it all seemed to come together quickly. Yeah, it was kind of a whirlwind process. Did you have a good time with it? Oh, lots of fun. Uh, in fact, I think that's the tightest game that we've ever designed. You proud of it? Oh, very much so. Um, Talk about that process a little bit. You said you designed it in two days. What's that like, Tom? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, at first, at first I thought it was going to be impossible. Uh, Warren has a penchant for giving us these seemingly impossible tasks. But the nice thing is that Raleigh loves that kind of challenge. So he really dug into it and came up with some great ideas for the game. And um, we, uh, of course, we worked all nighters on it but uh, it came out really good and, and went over very well with very few changes for the final product. Any thoughts you want to add to that really? Uh, it usually happens it turned out we had more than two days. I think that's just Warren's plot. That's true. <laughs> and you said there were only few changes. Anything come to mind that uh, changed from your original conception? Well the main thing was to tighten up the matrix, you know the special icons. We, we knew basically what they could be, uh, which ones worked best, and, and how they should be laid out. That's uh, the only thing that was left to uh, decide by the playtest team through extensive testing. Prior to Tribbles, what would you say if you picked a favorite, if we ask you to play favorites, uh, what was one of the better design processes for you? The process itself, you mean? Yes. Well, I don't I. My favorite, I think, is early on. The very first Star Trek game went very smoothly, and, and uh, even though it took a long time to, to execute it, the, the the initial design we had happened very quickly and, and stayed stayed pretty much the same throughout the whole process. So I like that. I think one of my favorite moments was uh, was Star Wars when we were just starting. The original objective of the game was. Uh, each of the players would have a base of cards, six cards, and the object was to try to destroy the base. And, and then at one point, Tom says, "Well, what if, what if your deck was your base?" And then, uh, then I think I added to that, uh, "Well, what if the deck was just your force?" And it was from there on. It seemed like that the whole idea of keeping the games contained to cards only, and without having to have counters. The cards represented everything, with the destiny numbers on them, etc. All the other CCGs have flowed, it seems, from that moment. One of my favorites. Do you two have that easy interplay going by now? Yeah, well, we have since high school. 
Is that when you first uh, started working together? Uh, we met each other in high school, and uh, Raleigh practically taught me how to play chess back then, but we didn't start working together till much later. And of course, now you guys have your own company that we uh, stay in touch with, right? Technical Game Services? Yeah, that's right. Uh, have you done any other projects that people might uh, know about? Well, uh, most of our work has been with Decipher over the years. Uh, we designed several uh, lines of games with them, including uh, a line called Scratchies, which they're uh, doing more with this year. They, we Last year we uh, created a version of Pokemon Scratchies, and they want to continue doing licensed versions of the game. And for those of you who don't know, the Scratchies is scratch-off games on a card, you know, just like lottery scratch-off tickets, but they're actual games for two players. That, and it's really interesting that they have actually a lot of strategy to them, so we enjoy doing those, too. Do you have a favorite game design? I talked about process earlier, but what would you say is one of the, the finished products that you're proudest of? Uh, for me, I think it's probably Tribbles. <laughs> It's just a simple little game, but uh, it's, it's so tight. Uh, um, but uh, going back to an original question that follows up on what you're asking now, um, Tom and I both really got our start in the game industry with Pentag. We didn't have anything to do with the design of it, uh, but that's always had a soft place in our hearts, and we were so glad when Decipher uh, took it over, and we'd sure like to see the tournaments come back because we were both heavily into that as well. You're both World Championship uh, qualified players in that, aren't you? Yeah, early on I won one of the early World Championships when the competition wasn't so stiff, but Raleigh was, uh, won the, the, the last World Championship they had before the game was taken over by Parker Brothers, and that was very exciting because it was extremely, extremely tough competition. It's like the, you know, the World Championships for Star Wars or Star Trek. The players really got into it, and it was exciting watching that. Well, congratulations, Charlie. Oh, thank you. That was like 20 years ago. I don't even know if the title still holds up anymore. <laughs> Have there been major innovations in Pente play, would you say? <laughs> yeah, there's uh, some resurgence in um, tournaments right now, but it's mainly by way of uh, email. Um, um, and it's international. I mean, there's Russian players now I hear that are really good. Yeah, and there's a um, currently there's a email international email match going on between some Russians, some Japanese, and some American players. And from what I understand, it's extremely tough competition. That the 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 pente game is closely related from a technical standpoint to a Japanese game and also a Russian game. So it's very easy for them to translate their skills into slightly different pente rules and uh, it's fairly hotly contested right now. Is there anything else? You said it was early, but anything else coming to mind this hour you'd like to share with us? Well, one thing, of course, is the uh, new Lord of the Rings uh, license that Decipher announced here at Gen Con. We're very excited about that. We've gotten a lot of people coming up and, and telling us what they want to see in it. And we do want to get a lot of feedback from not only the players, but also the fans of the books themselves and try to incorporate that as much as we can when we start working on the game design there. Already hot at work, are you? <laughs> yeah, it's very, very early at this point, and we won't really have any concrete things going on until later in the year, but uh, that's part of the process. Okay, well, we'll all be looking forward to it, I'm sure. All right, it's been nice talking to you then. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Raleigh. I think I need to get a big cup of coffee because it's going to be a busy next few months for us. All right, well, thanks for finding time now. <laughs>